Hi guys! Oh, Coco, what are you doing? Coming in. Right. Whilst we're waiting for people to arrive, hello! Um, I'm just going to thread up my overlock because we're going to need the overlocker quite soon. How are we all, guys? I hope you're well. It's another glorious day here in London. Um, just so you know, I haven't had a tattoo. Jasmine has put a tattoo on my arm. So yesterday, um, I found these tattoos that I bought for Christmas. I've completely forgotten about them. And she was like, oh, let's do them, let's do them. So she's like, you go first. So we put one on mummy's arm. And then she said she didn't want one on her arm. So now I've got to just go around like that with this on my arm for two weeks probably. <laughs> so I'm feeling a lot better than I did last week. Uh, not that I was feeling uh, sad in any way, I was just feeling very tired. Um, and uh, I had Friday off um, and the whole weekend and I didn't look at emails for a whole weekend which is rare for me so I feel very good for that. Although I've still been doing lots of heavy lifting and childcare so, and work so not feeling um, yeah, I'm not moaning. I feel a lot better. Anyway, guys, um, let's do our intro. So we are. Oh no, we're not. We're not using an overlocker, are we? That's not Lisa. We are here to sew the Lizzie skirt, which I am wearing, guys. Not that you can see it. Um, so here it is. Pockets in this version are incredibly uh, hidden, which I love. I love a secret pocket. There we go. Um, and to give you the length, this is the length. Ta -da! There are my knees. <laughs> so, I love the length. It's perfect. And I'm wearing it with one of my favourite ready to wear t shirts uh, with my lifetime motto always be kind. No excuse not to be kind in any situation. Um, so, yes. Um, Alex is here from the Sew Over It crew to answer your questions whilst you're whilst I'm sewing along because uh, it's quite hard for me to answer questions at the same time and we've all experienced uh, the issue when I try and look at the screen too much I sew through my finger <laughs> so um, and as always we have got a link to our donations page so all of our sew alongs that we do are free to watch but if you are in a position to contribute something then there is a link in the description box below and Alex I'm sure will be popping the link up too. Or we are making the Lizzie skirt today which is one of our, I've got very confused now, this one. <laughs> we are making the Lizzie skirt today which is one of our PDF patterns and currently my favourite skirt. My favourite skirt pattern of the Sew collection, for sure. And I was reminded of that when this morning when I was getting dressed, I thought, oh, I'll wear a t-shirt and a Lizzie skirt today. And I have, even this is after a massive sort out of my wardrobe, I have about five Lizzie skirts. Um, I just love them. So they're great in cotton, they're great in crepe, and they're great in rayon. And I've got one in all of those fabrics. Um, so, or more than one. Um, the one I'm wearing today is of course a Georgetti crepe and the one I'll be sewing with some uh, cotton lawn. Now let me just whiz this into this because we are going to use the overlocker first and then I shall start the instructions. Sorry that we didn't get a chance to do this first. Oh, so lovely when it's satisfying you can do nicely. I've got literally the animals around me here. That's just hilarious. What are you doing, you two? Just chill out, Coco. Coco was out all last night. <gasps> so I tried to get her in um, at the middle, um, but when I went to bed, you know, rattling and shaking her food, she wouldn't come. And uh, I'd had a little mild panic a couple of days before when she didn't turn up for her tea and I'd been at the shop for the first day, so I'd been out. Um, and the builders were here finishing off and they had said, you know, I said to them, it's fine, she can go out, she's been absolutely fine. And then she didn't come back that evening and I think I thought the builders had scared her off. So I then, I then went and uh, knocked on everyone on my side of the street. I knocked on everyone's door. Like, have you seen my cat? She's white and tortoiseshell. 
Anyway, it was great because I got to meet a lot of my neighbours. <laughs> but I was a bit stressed. And then, of course, and then I called mum and dad. I was like, I can't, like, go, go, she's not come for a tea. Um, and then, of course, half an hour after that, she just waltzed in. She's like, I'll come when I'm ready, Lisa. Like a proper cat. Sorry, I'm really struggling to thread this needle of the overlocker. Come on. I keep having to cut it short. There we go. We've won. Have we won? With one. Okie dokie doodly. Let's chuck that under there. Okay. Done. Right, that can just slide over. I'm prepared today, guys. I've got it printed out. <laughs> that Sylvia Robe debacle is still scarred on my mind. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Right, so let's see what we're gonna be starting with. Now, I am making it in this gorgeous, gorgeous cotton. So we bought, I chose some lovely fabrics for you all to um, make it out of if you don't have anything at home. Some lovely cotton lawns I chose. And this one is not what I put, there's actually one with a really, it's a beautiful um, flamingo one. I thought, oh, I'd love that one. And then this one came in, I'd ordered this one as well. And I was like, nope changing i love this one because i just think there's something kind of 50s about this you know like a big sort of skirt with a nipped in waist and like an almost novelty print and i haven't got anything like this and i've got so many things with big flowers and things on them so i decided for that so we are going to be popping the pockets in and we're also going to we've got all the pleats to do i am going to mix up though and i'm just going to say intentionally that i'm mixing it up because I want to put the zip all the way up through the waistband. So the pattern has a waistband that comes round and you um, you have a skirt hook and finishes the waistband at the back. However, I love it and it's so much neater when it just runs all the way up through. So that's what I want to do. So that means that the um, order of the construction will be different from what the instructions say. But again, it's just a nice little extra that I can show you if you haven't done that before. And also, it also shows you that it doesn't matter if you do do some things different um, ways round. There's certain things you can. So we have got, yeah, so the pockets I've got here. Annoyingly, I did want to have pockets that were uh, made out of um, plain fabric because that, as you can see, you can see through that, so you can see that bow which is from there so basically they're going to show through but we don't have any white cotton in the shop i am very tempted to cut up a pillowcase but i don't even have one that i think would be right i've got kind of waffly white pillowcases so yeah could do a sheet but that does seem like a big waste so anyway we might not get onto pockets today i was hoping we would um and waistband and again i've got not got any um normal interfacing in the shop we've only got tailoring interfacing so it's all a bit running out and you'll also notice they have pink oh, on my machine because they also don't have any white thread we do have that in the shop but um i thought i had some here and in the move it has lost itself i can't find it just snipping that so before we take pattern pieces off just make sure you've got all your notches in um and we're going to start off with some overlocking on the front skirt pieces so the front skirt you'll notice that it isn't um we do have a seam on the front and that's just because when it grades up to different sizes it's very hard to fit everything in if it was on the fold so um we're going to have to stitch those center front seams together um and what i did though is i have had it it pleats in sorry it's twisted this but it pleats into that centre front seam. So there's the centre front seam and the pleat kind of comes over it. So it's not really that noticeable. So, yeah. Right, so I'm going to take this off. Where's my pin dish? Um, and we'll start with overlocking those. And then we're going to stitch this together and do the pleats. So I'm hoping today that we will get pleats in. Um, and maybe get all the pockets in that's the plan but let's just see how we go um and then whatever we don't manage we can do as homework right where am i going here we go i'm going to slide this across 
I'm going to slide this over and I'm going to slide this over. Ugh. Oopsie. Right, so front skirt pieces, centre front. I just took that off and I've, yeah, it's very obvious actually. I was about to say you need to check what the centre front is, but it's fine because you've got this pocket bit here. So we know that the centre fronts are the opposite side. So the one that's continuously straight. And so we're going to overlock these separately. And whenever you overlock something separately, the key thing is to not shave off any of the seam allowance. By all means, shave off any slightly wonky cutting. And you want to keep the seam allowance. And also, if you can, when you come to a notch, open it. So when it overlocks over it, it's more obvious to find. I often forget to do that, but when you remember, just make it difficult. Just makes it quicker to find your notches. Well, I'm so excited about having this skirt. And I have actually, as you all know, I love a Suzanne cardigan. And I've got a new one. I bought, I haven't bought anything in lockdown. Because obviously I'm spending a lot of money on doing my house up. But I saw this really lovely blue Suzanne cardigan. And as you all know, I've got a weakness for the Suzanne um, site. And that's annoying. There's a little mark there. Oh, wonderful. Just at the centre front. Oh, wonderful. Oh, well. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's this blue. I haven't got anything that blue. And I love it, and I think it would suit me. Well, I've got it anyway. I thought it was a summer cardigan. It turns out it's very fluffy. So it's a winter one, or rather a cooler nights one. So I just thought that would go fabulously with this. So if you can imagine this. A lovely little blue cardigan and brown tan sandals. Oh, so wonderful to go to the shops in. Voila, that is now done. Now, I'm just going to check, but I do believe, <laughs> bear with, <laughs> that we are going to stitch those right sides together so that we can then do our pleats. Yes. Okay. I feel like I've got too many machines on the table. I've got no space. No space. Yep. Okay. You can go out the way, Mr. Overlocker. Mr. Sew Machine, you can go there. And let's pin these together. So let's now take our front pieces and we're going to place them right sides together. I need to also find my little snippy scissors. Still not unpack that. So I am pretty much unpacked, but I still have some stuff in the shop, a lot of my sewing things, because I don't have a sewing room. I didn't want to bring everything home when I hadn't sorted out the cupboards. And so I have started to sort the cupboards out, but I really don't know where I'm gonna put things. So I was thinking I need to maybe mount, I've got some of those pegboard things from Ikea. I don't know if you remember them from my last sewing room, and I'm gonna to have to mount them on the inside of cupboard doors, and then I can hook my threads and things up on there. So, yeah, but I didn't want to bring things home until I could do that. I was very excited because on um, Friday, Friday? No, Sunday, my, uh, my drill arrived. I'd lost my drill. So I bought myself a Makita drill, which is like a really good one. Um, I'm very excited. I've not had a chance to do any drilling yet because I've had Jazzy since Friday. And I don't really want to do drilling when she's around. Um, but yeah. I'm excited tomorrow. Neighbours be warned tomorrow. Jasmine, I do not have in the evening and I shall be drilling. Okay, so we have now pinned this right sides together. And we are going to sew it with our seam allowance. Now, once again, just to point out, yes, I'm sewing with pink thread on top and white underneath. Not intentional. Well, it is intentional, but not ideal. The seam allowance is 1.5 centimetres, and that's 5 eighths of an inch. Um, I'm just going to increase that stitch length a little. And away we go. Now you'll notice I'm not doing any pattern matching because I'm not a massive pattern matcher. And with something like this, I don't feel like it's that important. Um, I just don't like wasting fabric. And I like my pattern matching when it's something like stripes. I mean, that's important, but this sort of thing, no. 
don't think we've discussed this already on another sew along how I'm not the best at pattern matches in terms of patience. Oh my goodness, it's so nice to be sewing. I haven't sewn since last week, guys. I still haven't finished my, uh, my um, Giselle dress. I've got that, I mean, my, my diary is now so chocker. Um, I actually have to diarise when I'm gonna sew. Um, and I've got that down to finish this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just really nice to be back on the sewing machine. I've still got so many things I want to make. I really I want to make my long Sylvia dressing gown for my new house. New house, new dressing gown is the thing. And then I want to, um, what else do I want to make? I have loads of things. Oh, I've still made those pyjamas, although I think that fabric is sold out now. <laughs> but the fabric, um, those lovely palm pyjamas. They'd be lovely in this actually, wouldn't they? Hmm. Okay, right, we're now going to press open that seam. So splitting open the seam and we're going to just press that flat and open. Like so. Okay. And now we are going to put the pleats in. So you'll have seen on the pattern, there's lots of notches and the direction is also marked on... Um, the pattern to sort of show you which direction but essentially on the front we are folding them in to the center front direction so first notch here he is going in to meet the center front like so let me see mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to put two pins in there because it's quite a big pleat and I don't want that to kind of get caught out. Right. And then we're going to do the same here. He is going to there. They're kissing. I always think of, <laughs> I always think of pleats when they come into the centre front that they're kissing each other. Having a little cuddle at the front of my <laughs> at the front of my skirt. Okay, so then we're going to carry on with the others. I find it easier then to go to the side and to do that one. So you can see the shape there of the pleat. So the last one is going to come in like that. It's the one that's on the most um, the furthest away from on the side seam. And then this one, he is going in to there. Who think there? Wait a second, I think I've got that wrong because if that one then goes into there. Bear with. <laughs> I might have missed a notch. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yes, so he's going into there, and then he goes into there, and then he goes into there. What is happening? One notch into that one. Then we've got our next notch going into there. That is definitely right. Mm -hmm. And then our next notch. That's too far. I think this is where I've got one missing. Sorry, guys. La. Mm -hmm. There's my centre front. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> thought so. I've missed that notch there. Let's mark that in on the other side. Right, that's better. So, two not we've got two there, yeah. And we should try and do it in front like this. Then we've got so that one goes there. Then that is the next notch along, and he goes with that one, like that. 
so lovely and soft this cotton lawn. Then this notch here, he goes to the centre front. Right, I need to turn it this way because I'm already pinning it on the wrong side. Just repin the notches so that you've got all the pleats, sorry, not the notches, the pleats, because then you've got all of the layers at that centre front point. So all the pleats should be going towards the side there. So the front goes in and then that back bit goes towards the side seam. Okay. That one needs to just get anchored there. Anchor the back of that one. Okay, lovely. Now I'm going to do the other side. So center front pleat in so that it is kissing its friend on the other side. It's not social distancing. <laughs> oh dear, lost the plot, social distancing pleats. Let's not get the giggles again, Lisa. Um, and then here comes the next one. And there we go, the last one. So the pleats are quite deep because what they do is they add the volume in the skirt. So we have to pleat away the width from the hem of the skirt so that we can get that lovely wasted seam, wasted waist, <laughs> nipped in waist. Okay, so that's the front. Um, then, I'll just repin that one so it catches the back of the pleat. That's the front. And then I'm gonna just pin the back whilst we're here because um, I want to just do all my prep and then we can just sew all of them together at the same time. Remember that time to do that, please. I'm now nervous, guys. I'm so nervous I'm going to make a mistake. Yeah, because it says here to do the um, zip first, I do believe. Da, da, da. Yeah, because then you pleat over the zip, so we're obviously not going to do that. I'm trying to think, that is going to make it trickier to do the zipping up, but I have done that before. How did I do it though? I don't know if we can do that. Just thinking, because when the way that it's constructed, the pleat at the back just does the same with the centre front, so it pleats over the zip, which again makes it really lovely, so the zip insertion is nice and neat. Um, however, if we, um, if we put the waistband on first, we can't then have the pleat going over. I'm not gonna confuse it. We're gonna stick to what the instructions say. Sorry guys, but I think it will be too fiddly because that last pleat, you need it out of the way to put the zip in. Um, you, there's just no way you can do it. So you'd have to unpick the waistband. No, just couldn't work. I obviously haven't done this bit before. <laughs> so we are just going to machine tack these ones in place and then we're gonna move on to the uh, onto the back. So when you're machine tacking, um, it's essentially you do it with a long stitch length, ideally the longest your machine does, but you can see I've just whizzed on without it. It's not that important. It's, it's gonna get encased in the, uh, in the seam allowance when its waistband is attached, so it's really not that important, if, but some people like to take them out. Um, it's important that the seam that you stitch this machine tacking in um, at a centimetre, so within the 1.5 centimetre seam allowance, so then it doesn't show through once you've put your waistband on. That's why when we're ever machine tacking for this purpose, it's always got to be within the seam allowance. Just be careful as you're sewing the pleats in that you don't, um, that you don't 
accidentally twist one over on the back. You want to make sure that they're staying flat. As you take your pins out, just do be careful that your, the back of your pleats stays in position. Okay, my lovely pink thread so you guys can see. That is the front and already, I just want to hold it up so this is the first time you're doing something like this. Look, already it's got, we've got a lovely, you can just see how it's taking shape very quickly. So, that to one side. Next, we are going to do the backs. So, for the backs, um, we're going to overlock the back seams so that separately, exactly the same, and then we're going to put the zip in. When we get to the point where I'm showing you what I meant about the uh, zip being in, I'm going to try and explain it more clearly about the pleats. Um, because, yeah, it's, it just you'd have to unpick and faff around. Not worth it. Skirt hooks, here we come, guys. But I don't know if we've done a skirt hook in the so long yet, have we? Did we do it on the Ava or did we do... No, because on the Ava we did it continuously up. Maybe that's good. So we put the schedule up for next week, um, which is the Cora top, which is possibly one of the most requested um, patterns we've had for so alongs. So I'm going to make the uh, top version because um, I don't, you know, I've got to think about my knees. I don't like my knees and the length of the Cora looks best, I think, as a dress shorter above the knee so i'm going to make a top version but also because at the actually at the moment a nice short sleeve loose top <laughs> so quick um a loose top is really yeah really nice interestingly actually i have got some of this left i've got like um a little bit left like just over half a meter and i'm gonna make um a little um sleeveless shift top I think it looked really cute with jeans, or I could wear the whole outfit together. Um, so yeah, pour a top next week, um, and I think because that pleat has been a big request, people would like to see that, so we're going to be doing that. I'm excited to do that, and I recommend Rayon for that. Now, today's one of, on, on my, in my diary today, I'm going to be choosing a couple of fabrics that would be good for that. Um, whether or not they're going to come on time though, I mean at the moment sometimes our suppliers are a bit slow, but we will try and get it up online for them. I think I'm going to, I know which supplier will deliver it quickly, so I think I might just ask him. Um, but yeah, you can use any drapey fabric, so my crepes or the sprinkles, they would work. Um, yeah, oops, zippy whip. Um, so that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. And I think also what's quite nice about the Coro is there is less to it. So uh, there probably won't be any homework. And one thing I should point out, though, as from next week, guys, we're going to do the sew alongs on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now, there's two reasons why we're doing that, and both of them are personal to me. So I'm sorry if it's no longer, if that isn't particularly convenient for you guys. But one of the reasons is when we are doing the bigger projects and I have to do the homework that I then set you, and I have to do it too, I sometimes struggle to get it done with everything else that I'm trying to do. And so I wanted to have a day gap in the middle. And the other reason is we have kept Jasmine at her nursery back in Hackney, which um, is open today. Um, and uh, we wanted her to stay there even though I've moved further away. Um, but it is an hour round trip and it's the nursery is quite near to my shop and near to where I used to live. Uh, um, but now, where I am now, it's a bit of a trek and um, it's, um, yeah, I just thought it'd be much better if um, I could do my shop day on a day that I'm going to take Jazzy to nursery and so that's why I'm going to do this. That's why we've rejiggled it a bit. Um, but yeah, I think it'd be nice as well because then we spread the fun out amongst the week as well. So same time, one o'clock, but Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay, right, zip time. So, centre back skirt, right side up, open the zip. Place the zip down, um, face down onto, let's turn this down, 
onto the fabric. There should be a notch indicating where the bottom of the zip will go. But the most important thing is, is that the top of the zip is sitting exactly. Can you see that? Ah! Sorry. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> Sorry. Anyone else feeling sick? so that you can see it but I can't <laughs> okay so face down to the top of the zip that plastic bit where it stops that needs to be 1.5 from the top raw edge there oh dear so pop in the pin in <sighs> and we're going to put the pins upwards towards the top of the zip and we're going to make sure that the teeth <laughs> you did get to see my light, Lorianne. <sighs> um, and the uh, yeah, the um, uh, teeth of the zip need to be one point five centimeters or five eighths of an inch from the overlocked edge. There, I'm going to pin it, and then I'm just going to turn it around. That'll be much easier than me trying to faff around with the tripod again. <sighs> oh dear. Okay, there we go. So as we've always been doing, we're going to pop that zip in with a regular zip foot and then we're going to pop it, pop it in with a concealed zip foot. So you'll notice ooh, after, <laughs> you'll notice that, sorry guys, just laughing at your comments. You'll notice that um, we haven't put anything up beyond the um, next week. Let me just explain what I'm doing and then I'll talk about that. Okay, so, uh, so I've got a single arm foot, so I have to move my needle over to the side that I'm sewing and we're just gonna run this through the middle of the um, zip tape. So it doesn't matter if it's not completely central, it just needs to hold that zip tape in place so that all the pins can come out. So, we haven't put any more in the schedule because next week, incredibly exciting, our ebook is coming out. Now, I'm not going to tell you what day it is, but it's coming out next week, and uh, we are all working very hard, particularly Nicole, to get it ready for you. Um, but it's looking beautiful. I'm so excited. I mean, this has been a project we've been working on over a year, about a year. I usually do. I start designing it about a year before the release. Um, anyway, so that's exciting. Um, and so we thought that we'd want to have some um, sew-alongs that were all about the ebook. So that's why they haven't been going up, but they will be going up next week. And so after next week, so we're going to do a couple of weeks of sew alongs related to the ebook. Okay, we've stitched that in. We're now going to take that. We're going to put the needle back to the middle. And we are going to... Hmm. We are going to... Um, so put the concealed zip foot on and now we're going to tuck our teeth of our zip into the channels. Um, on the right, I'm going on the left hand channel here. I've made sure my seam is uh, stitched in. Oh! That was the pedal for the head locker. <laughs> and make sure that my um, stitch length is back to normal. Yes, the new ebook has the full size range. It will be starting at size six and it will be going to size 30. Very excited about that too. The amount of work that has gone into uh, this is insane. Nicole for one, I think we'll need to lie down for a month. So along we go sewing along here now I'm just giving it a little bit of a tug you don't need to always do this but as we know with the bananas they do get a little bit stuck so, there we 
There we go. That's as far as I can go. So, let's make that out. And let's cut off all those threads. Mm -hmm. Yep. It is exciting. I mean, it is. Uh, I guess we would. We probably would have had an event in London, but it's a shame that we won't be able to do that. But we'll be making sure we'll be having all the fun and celebrations and showing you all online. So if you're not on our um, mailing list, make sure you're on our mailing list because you're here first and all the social media channels as well. Right, so we've done one side. So now we're going to whiz along the other side. And the main thing is that we get to the top of the zip starting in the same position. So you want to look at what that distance is there and you want to make sure that you're getting that on the same on the other side. It's nice actually putting a zip into two pieces of fabric that haven't been sewn into anything. Very nice. Just make sure you don't get yourself in a pickle with a twist. As you can see, I've just had to do my little funny maneuver so that I don't get in a twist. So we're going down the straight side to the centre back that we've overlocked of the uh, skirt, face down. And then I'm just going to use this as a guide. I'm going to like line it up with the fabric so they're lined up and then making sure that the uh, zip tape is sticking out the same amount as well. That's fine. Okay, just check that again. Now that I've pinned it, I want to be extra thorough. Yeah. Okay, and then just again, make sure so we make sure the teeth are sitting 1.5 centimeters or five eighths of an inch from the uh, overlocked edge. Okay. Like so. Then, Mr. Single Arm Foot, on he bobs. There we go, I'll move my needle over to the other side this time, put it onto a long stitch length, and down we go. Hmm. I've got that annoying, it's very annoying sometimes when there's the thread from the beginning just gets caught up in your sewing. You can just stop and just pull it out of the way. So those of you that are keen to see more of my house, um, Molly and I are starting to film little tours and things. To, so we did a bit of filming yesterday, I showed you my kitchen because nothing is completely finished yet, but I think it's interesting to see where it is at the moment. So I showed you my kitchen, and we also did a little garden tour. Nothing on my dad's, but it's um, nice to see how it's coming along, because already I've made some changes to it. So yeah, tune in to Lisa Comfort Home for that, if you're interested to see that. And I'm also thinking of doing some kind of cycle along and so along so I want to do I've got to make some curtains for my patio door I'm just going to make one curtain to put it to the side um, and I want to make a kind of fake blind for the kitchen just because the window is not particularly nice but I can't afford to replace the window so I'm just going to it's perfectly fine and functioning it needs a good clean but then I just thought well if I make a little kind of fake uh, Roman blind then that will just smarten it up so I'm going to, I thought I'd film them and do them as sew-alongs or something like that, but on the other channel. But I'll tell you about it once I'm, I know when I'm doing it. I've just put the wrong foot on, do, do apologise. <laughs> Concealed it foot back on. Okay. And now, again. Yes, curtain sew-along, absolutely. It'll just be a pencil pleat, three pencil pleat sew-along, um, sorry, curtain. But yeah, I definitely will do that. Um... Um, oh no, it's getting stuck. I 
had such a satisfying evening, guys. The material will be um, Lisa Comfort Home material. Um, I had such a satisfying evening last night. I. Uh... Do you know what I did? I watched a film. What did I watch? Um, really old film, John Grisham film. I'd watched The Firm last week and then Amazon recommended this one this week. I think it was called The Chamber with Gene Hackman. And uh, I watched that and I did three baskets of ironing. And I forgot how much I loved ironing because I haven't been ironing for so long because, as you know, I moaned about my dad doing the ironing back up in Yorkshire. Um, very kindly, but not very well. <laughs> and uh, so... And then I just, I've basically been washing whilst I've been here, but I haven't had a chance to do any ironing. So yeah, I did the ironing and I just, there's nothing nicer than putting away freshly ironed clothes. And you know, my favourite thing is putting away iron pillowcases. Oh, Alex is linking to my fabrics. Yes, on the fabrics as well, we've got two new colourways in Bombay Spring that are about to come out. Um, we've been waiting for ages because, frustratingly, they were meant to come at the start of March and then they were delayed by a couple of weeks and then lockdown hit at that point. So, we didn't get them until very, very recently. So, we're going to be photographing them. We've got a photo shoot this week. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll be photographing them then and then they'll be up in the wild. Right, guys. Lovely. So let's, whilst we're here, let's finish that centre back seam. I know that looks puckered by the way, but that will press out. Don't worry about that. Do not worry. It'll be fine. Oh, another thing I did at the weekend. I did. Yeah, I am. Thank you, Marie. I'm feeling a lot better. Um, at the weekend, so obviously we're all having to, you know, do these funny uh, zoomy things at the moment. Just now pinning, guys, the, centre, the rest of the centre-back seam right side together. And my friend suggested a murder mystery party. So that was, yeah, a Zoom murder mystery party with I don't know how many of us were. They were like, most of them with their husbands. Um, so I think they were like, I don't know, maybe 10 or something, 9 or 10 of us. Um, and uh, people kind of did dress up. But of course, the great thing about that is you only have to dress up the top half. My character was 50 pence, <laughs> I guess making, he was from Compton in LA. So I had like a random old baseball pack, pack thing of, um, of mats and a uh, um, baseball hat and an oversized t-shirt. That was my costume. But my friends had really gone into like, um, really gone into it. Anyway, one friend was an Italian businesswoman and me doing my Italian accent just made me think of her then because she was like, hello, my name is da 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 and I am a really good businesswoman. <laughs> so that's the worst Italian accent. Anyway, it was a lot of fun, but it was very hard to follow and I don't know if anyone has done a murder mystery party. Obviously, normally they're over dinner um, and you can like, you know, but with those, you are looking at little screens on Zoom and trying to like remember. Anyway, I was the murderer. I didn't know. <laughs> we didn't know until the end. So they don't tell the murderer who's the murderer until the end. But yeah, it was fun. Um, right, I put my single arm foot back on and we are going to now stitch this with the seam allowance 1.5 centimetres. But remember, if you've moved the um, arm over to the right, then, um, sorry, the arm, the needle, then you will need to kind of extend your seam allowance because that will be less than 1.5. Um, and we're now going to just finish this seam. So I put this arm on because when we come up to here, we want to be able to get nice and close. Uh, anyway, I said it was fun, but I got quite bored because also it was like it was three, um, three rounds. But yeah, it was great seeing everyone's costumes. Like, I loved that and it did make me smile. But I was like, can we do a pub quiz next time? <laughs> it's a bit easier. So I think we're going to do that. We've already done one of those um, where we each did a round. That was fun. But um, yeah. Great though how creative people get, isn't it? When they, you know, there's always something you can think of that you can do. My sister wants me to help her sort her wardrobe out over Zoom or FaceTime or something. So uh, we'll be doing a wardrobe sort out. Actually, nothing I love more 
although I feel I won't be able to be as uh, I won't be able to get, get everything really clearly through the screen, but I know most of my sister's clothes, so. Ooh, okay. So we're getting to that point now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the zip out, or the zip tape, and then I'm gonna pin seam allowances together, sandwiching that in. And then we're heading towards the end. Now, with this, you don't want to aim for the actual stitching where you put the zipping because that will be too difficult and you will end up getting a funny bump. So it's much better just to go straight and just go straight, but just two millimetres in front of it. So you still need to kind of pull it back and you need to reverse. I'll show you quite good actually with the pink you can probably see it a bit better well let's have a look here it is on that side can you see I don't know if you can see there and on this side it's a bit awkward there it is there so that looks like you know because it doesn't line up it's not going to be neat but actually when you press it it's really neat and that's the best way of finishing the end of a concealed zip so it's always very satisfying pinning, um, sorry, pinning, sewing a concealed zip. How are we doing? 46 minutes. Whoa, we've got to get pockets done. It's not going to happen, is it? Oh, no. Well, let's get the pleats done for the back and then we'll get the um, instructions out and see what we can do tonight. Right, so I'm just going to start by just pressing that seam open from the bottom of the zip. Then... I like to turn it over and press the zip from this side. Okay. Lots of steam will help keep it nice and uh, pressed, but nice and neat. It's actually, I think it does need a bit of a pressing cloth. I don't want to do too hard pressing. When it's cotton lawn, it will show up everything, but it is definitely looking better. Oh, I just seem to put in some random creases at the bottom. Definitely better, okay. There. So the bottom is there. You, but you can't really see where the zip stops and the, and the stitching begins so I'm very happy with that and so now we're going to go on to our pleating of these of the back now and this is where I'm going to put this in and then you'll see so that notch there is going to pleat into the center back like so so if you imagined if we had already put that pleat in how would we get that would be really fiddly to get that zip in I think so it's just easier if it's done in this direct order because yeah that pleat there I guess you would have still had your seam allowance but the likelihood of you catching that in would have been high so yeah I think we did the right thing guys because mm -hmm. you also would have had the waistband on top so anyway so that one goes into there and then we've got the next notch going from there to there. And there is some overlap of these pleats, so it's definitely a good idea to pin two pins per pleat. And then when you come to do the next one, so now I've got a notch, and this notch is actually gonna go over the back of that pleat. So I'm now gonna take that pin out here and put it back in there. If you were doing this with me, this would not be confusing. <laughs> but I think if you're not doing it with me, it might be a bit confusing. Okay, and then the last one. Quite a big one, that last one. And again, the same. You wanna, when you're pinning that in, you're gonna be pinning through the back of the other pleat. And then that needs to just go in. Okay, so that's one side done. Okay. 
So now let's do the other side in the same way. I think I need a tissue. Excuse me, guys. I need to blow my nose. Hay fever in this country is not good this year. Anyone else who suffers from hay fever, I don't get it badly, but it definitely is worse. Yeah, and this is, and also with my nose stud, it's never ideal. Ugh. This eyeliner, I've just been using this eyeliner recently and it keeps um, uh, transferring to here. And I did a notice after a so long, a while ago, I like had these whole marks there. And I thought, gosh, you guys had, must have seen it and been like early, so what's going on with your makeup? <laughs> it's not there today though. No. I do check before now, paranoid. Okay, so waffle over. Let's now... <laughs> Fold in the other side in the same way. So the beauty of this is he is then hidden, he being the zip. Because the pleats kiss each other at the top, but then it hides the zip, which I love. Okay. Oh, Coco's snoring, or is it Poppy? I think they're both there, snoring away on the sofa. Um, okay. okay, for the inny. Next one, where was it? There we go. Almost lost that. Okay, so now we're going to machine tack those in place. So put your regular foot back on, and away before I start picking those out again. Um. My centimetre seam allowance, three-eighths of an inch. And you want to sew in the direction of the pleats, ideally. So I'm going to do one side. So we're sewing towards the centre back zip. And then when I do the other side, it's going to be a bit awkward, but I am going to sew this machine tacking in the other direction. So it doesn't mean I'm going to have all the fabric up here, but it's just better for the pleat if you're tacking it in in the direction that you folded them in. Let's mm, make sure that the thing is not turning itself into a pickle, which it was. and a back skirt but we do have to do the um pockets let's see let's see how much i'm just wondering whether if there's anything that you could do as homework or whether you don't need to do that because so we could just do a little bit of pocket pocket i used to have a textile teacher that used to say pocket even though she wasn't scottish lisa you've not put your pocket in properly sorry <laughs> oh right we could pin um we could do the pinning of the pockets now, actually. And then maybe you could do the, I just feel like there's a little bit of a fiddly bit on the pocket, so I'd rather us all do that together. Yeah, we're not gonna be doing the lining, guys, so we are. I'm gonna be skipping that. So, um, yeah, I think we should be able to finish it tomorrow, but we might as well do some warm pocket positioning now, because 
we've got time. So, Mr. Pockets, you should have cut two pairs of these. So we're going to place it right sides together on here. So this is the back, but it doesn't matter. We need to do the same with the back and the front. And because you've got these lovely little kind of grown on pocket facings that jut out, they will um, make it really easy to line it up. And then the same on here. This one I'm going to pin from the skirt side so that when I'm sewing it, all the extra will be off the edge of the machine. So I'm just going to flip that over. Um, right sides together again. There is a notch as well along this pocket edge there that you can use to line up. So that's that and that. I just want to check my seam allowances. Pretty sure they're 1.5. Well, let's just checky check check. That they are. So, um, we are going to sew with 1.5 centimeters, 5 eighths of an inch down this edge. Oh no, I've got it on a bit of a too long a stitch length there. That's fine. I was thinking, oh, that's feeding through very quickly. This is, I've got it on a rather generous stitch length, but it's fine. It wasn't machine tapping width, it was all length rather. Obviously reverse the beginning at the end, make sure they're nice and secure. And then the same on this side. Sorry, I've got washing machines and dishwashers. Everything's beeping at the same time. Okay. Oopsies. So that's that. I think we're going to do understitching. Are we going to do understitching? Sorry, guys. Once again, we are going to do understitching. Okay. How much time? We haven't really got much time. Okay, let's... So the only thing that I think you should do is just repeat that on the front. So just put your pocket buckets on the front, overlock this edge here, um, or zigzag it, and press it towards um, the skirt. And then we'll do our understitching. Is it pressed towards the skirt? I think it should be pressed towards the pocket. Pocket, yeah, it's pressed towards the pocket, not the skirt. Um, so yeah, press that towards the skirt. Um, and um, make sure it's overlocked till finished and do the same on the other one. And then tomorrow we'll finish the pockets, we'll do the side seams and we'll put the waistband on and everything will be lovely and finished. Um, and yeah, and then the hem we can do ourselves, can't we, if we don't get a chance to do it tomorrow. Right, that is it for today. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. Um, like I said, I absolutely was so lovely to be back sewing again. So thank you for giving me a reason to be back here sewing with you. Um, I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up. Or if you haven't subscribed to us, don't forget to subscribe. Um, it just helps to, for other people to find us that way. And if you've got anyone you think will be interested in that, it's a good beginnerish pattern. So um, if you know anybody that's just got into sewing and thinking about, you know, having a bit more help with it, you could watch this and it will hopefully help you. <laughs> um, thanks to Alex for answering your questions. We will be back tomorrow at the same time. Um, if you want to um, contribute something towards this, there is a link um, in the description box for our coffee page and you can go and buy us a coffee, a virtual coffee, three pounds. Thank you so much to all of you who've been doing that already and supporting us, it's made a massive difference. Right guys, I will see you tomorrow at one o'clock for the rest of the skirt. Bye!